This is uh, Dr. Oswad speaking to you during um, CVI 2020 on orbital atherectomy step by step. I come from Detroit, um, Henry Ford Hospital. These are my disclosure of note. I am a, consulting, a consultant and a speaker for Cardiovascular uh, Systems Incorporated, which is the maker of, of orbital atherectomy. In the next uh, eight minutes, I will speak um, to you about which lesion to use, which lesion to avoid, and technical principles during orbital atherectomy. Uh, this is the, um, the crown, um, the classical crown for coronary orbital atherectomy. This size 1.25, the FDA approved the larger size, but this is what's available in the market. If you notice, it has off-center um, uh, center of gravity, when it's a rotate at 80,000 or 120,000 RPMs, it will orbit around the vessel. This is a different than the uh, front cutting with a rotational atherectomy. This is the mechanism where the uh, orbit will basically um, go around the vessel and ablate the plaque, the calcified plaque particularly, and not uh, damage the non-calcified uh, tissues. Which lesions? Uh, we should apply orbital uh, atherectomy in. Um, obviously, calcified lesions, and these are the inclusion criteria in, in the ORBIT-2 clinical trial and ECLIPSE trial, which we uh, just finished and with um, uh, publication. We are looking forward to the result of the ECLIPSE trial. Radiopacity in both sides of the vessels is sh shown before um, a contrast injection and the length of the calcium in, um, uh, in fluoroscopy should be 15 millimeter mercury. Or by intravascular imaging, if you have 270 degrees arc. So where do I use uh, orbital atherectomy? This is not um, uh, approved yet, but we had to use orbital atherectomy in a stent under expansion with a tremendous uh, success. If you notice here, this is uh, a plaque constraining a stent with orbital atherectomy, we were able to show even at bench side testing that the orbit actually damages the stent and damage the plaque uh, behind it um, and uh, allow us to expand the, uh, the underexpanded stent. Uh, University of Washington colleagues and us uh, published our experience, uh, initial experience in 40 patients. We only had two uh, no reflow that caused pretty procedural MI Otherwise, uh, it's a pretty uh, safe and a pretty effective. Uh, Osseal disease is a particularly suited for orbital atherectomy. Um, I think we should you should use the old supportive, not the uh, flex tip wire uh, that allows you to use non-supportive guide catheter that can actually sit coaxially outside the ostium and you can ablate, integrate, or retrograde, I don't think it makes a difference. Uh, left main disease, either osseal, mid-shaft, or especially distal disease, especially suitable for orbital atherectomy because the orbit uh, is suited for large vessel, and normally left main is large vessel, so you can ablate more effectively around the plaque. So which lesions to avoid? I think uh, tortuous and eccentric lesions, especially if you need a front cutting, uh, you should um, move to a um, different uh, device, uh, rotational atherectomy or even cutting balloon. I think rotational atherectomy is safe. If you have to wedge the crown uh, between this um, uh, uh, nodule of uh, calcium and the uh, wall that's not calcified, that actually might cause a perforation, especially if there is a tortuosity. Uh, technical principles, uh, as we alluded to, it's an uh, orbital atherectomy because of the uh, centrifugal forces and uh, two speeds of rot uh, rotation. The uh, crown will orbit around the vessel and cause an ablation. The most important point uh, when I using orbital atherectomy to advance the crown and retract it slowly, you actually perform cutting in and cutting out but the slow advancement and slow retractions is a key because allows the crown to achieve more orbit. This is at 80,000 RPM and 120,000 RPM. You almost have the same orbit 
if you uh, advance 120,000 RPMs at one centimeter per second versus one millimeter per second. This is a typo here, excuse the typo. <clears throat> However, if you go slow at uh, one millimeter per second, you actually achieve a bigger orbit uh, and you achieve more efficient and effective uh, ablation. So there is a debate about integrated versus retrograde cutting. I think if you can do retrograde cutting, that might be safer. And if you have to deal with this uh, significant tortuosity, you probably should go with retrograde cutting if you can. Um, this is one of the tortuosity where probably you should avoid. Uh, this is um, a, a, a shaft, a drive shaft separation from the crown. It was easily retrieved by pulling back with using a guide extension. This is an example, 67 uh, years old uh, patient with three vessel disease, cardiogenic shock. We treated the left main into the cirque and we brought him back. This is rewiring primarily with a Viper flex tip wire uh, with a micro catheter, changing, removing the micro catheter, then uh, open the struts uh, into the LED. We use Viper Glide to advance the crown into the LED, if you notice here. And then this is real time, uh, slow movement advancement of the crown to avoid complication and avoid um, an ordinary flow. If you use vasoactive material with the, uh, with the Viper Glide that actually flushes with the crown, that will give you um, uh, some protection against the ordinary flow. Uh, then balloon angioplasty and um, ad hoc uh, cool out technique of the left main with the final results. In summary, orbital atherectomy is different than rotational atherectomy. Orbital atherectomy is effective in most calcified lesion. Orbital atherectomy should be avoided in tortuous vessel, especially uh, when uh, in need of a front cutting. Uh, the key um, uh, technical point here is a slow advancement and slow retrieval retraction of the crown. The crown cuts both ways and um, the fast movement is detrimental, causes more complications and less effective cutting. If you still have any questions, you can uh, email me or call me. These are some of uh, um, the uh, CTO books um, uh, not related to orbital atherectomy, but you can expand in complex PCI. Thank you so much.